Hi parents, thank you for clicking in. I'm Elaine from Great Solution Genie Math. In this video, I will be explaining complex percentage questions that we can expect to see in a PSLE paper. So what makes a percentage question complex? These questions typically involve two or more parties, so we can be looking at a comparison between two people, or a comparison between two or even more objects. When students read such questions, they feel a bit confused because they do not know what value equals to 100% and what value is more or less than 100%. Some of these questions also involve what we call of the remainder questions, where we are also looking at a percentage of a portion of the total rather than a percentage of the original amount. Using two questions from past year prelim papers, I will explain to you how we can organize this information and make it a lot simpler for the student to understand and therefore solve the question. The first question is taken from St. Nicholas Girls School and it is worth 4 marks. On Monday, Xander and Tristan each received some money from their mother. Xander received $80 less than Tristan. They did not spend any money on Monday. On Tuesday, Tristan gave Xander 40% of his money. On Wednesday, Tristan spent 25% of his remaining money on a wallet which cost $39. What was the total amount of money Xander and Tristan received on Monday? So as you can see, we have an off the remainder question right here. And we are also comparing between two people, the money that Tristan received and the money that Xander received. So this is what makes a percentage question complex because the student will be confused as to whether they should make Tristan's money 100% or they should make Xander's money 100%. So if we read the question carefully, we would notice that the question is actually only tracking the changes to Tristan's money and not Xander's. So in this case, it would be much easier to let the amount of money Tristan received be 100%. Since Tristan's money is 100%, I would use 100 units to represent his money because students are typically more comfortable using units. So Tristan had 100 units at first. This is his original amount. All right. On Monday, he did not spend any money, but on Tuesday, he gave Xander 40% of his money. So 40% is 40 units. That would mean that his remainder is 60 units. Okay, on Wednesday, Tristan spent 25% of his remaining money on a wallet which cost $39. So let's deal with the 25% first. His remaining money is here, so I'll just put an R to represent remainder. Okay, 25% of his remaining money means 25% of 60 units. is spent on a wallet which means there is 75% that's untouched okay let's deal with the 25% because we have an actual monetary value to the 25% so 25% of 60 units would be 25 over 100 multiplied by 60 units Okay, 25% is actually one quarter, so that would give us 15 units. That would mean that 15 units is $39. So there we have it. Okay, we can go ahead and solve what one unit is. So 39 divided by 15 gives us $2.60. Since Tristan received 100 units, we can go ahead and find out how much 100 units is. $2.60 multiplied by 100 would give us 
$260. So this is the amount that Tristan received. All right, going back to the question, Xander received $80 less than Tristan. So we simply subtract 80 from 260. And that would give us $180. Since the question is asking us to find out the total amount of money both boys received on Monday, we simply add these two amounts together. So $260 plus $180 would give us $440. And that is our answer to this question. The next question is taken from Cedar Primary School and it is also worth 4 marks. At first, Mina had 83 blue and red ribbons. She used 7 blue ribbons and made more red ribbons. The number of red ribbons increased by 60%. At the end, she had a total of 100 ribbons. How many blue ribbons did she have at first? So what makes this question complex is that we are comparing two parties, the blue ribbons and the red ribbons. To make things a little more confusing, the number of blue ribbons decreased by 7 and the number of red ribbons increased by an unknown amount. So the key concept is to find 100% of red ribbons. Okay, Since we know the total number of ribbons before and after and we also know the decrease in the number of blue ribbons, we are able to calculate the increase in the number of red ribbons. And that mystery number would be 60% of the original number of red ribbons. To better visualize what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and organize the information. And you can see that it is actually not that hard. Since this is a before and after question, we can make use of the BCA model. Before, change, and after. And we are comparing the blue ribbons, red ribbons, and I will also add a column for total since we know the total number of blue and red ribbons before and after. So I'll go ahead and fill up the information I have. 83 ribbons before and 100 ribbons after. I do not know how many blue and red ribbons there are individually, so I'll leave those blank. Since 7 blue ribbons were used, I would write minus 7 here. And the number of red ribbons increased by 60%. So I would write plus 60% over here. So all the information we have is here right now. How do we start? Since there was a decrease in the number of blue ribbons by 7, we can go ahead and do that. 83 minus 7 would give us 76. So before there was an increase in the number of red ribbons, there was 76 ribbons altogether. After a 60% increase in the number of red ribbons, the total number of ribbons increased from 76 to 100. Okay. So let's do a quick math. 100 minus 76 would give us 24. So there was an increase in 24 red ribbons. That would mean that 24 red ribbons is actually 60% of the total red ribbons. Now that we have this information, we can finally achieve our objective of finding 100% of red ribbons. So let's write that down. So 60% of red ribbons is equal to 24. From here, we can find out the total number of red ribbons and that would be 24 over 60 times 100 and that would give us 40. So let's include this information in the BCA model. So now that we know the number of red ribbons and the total number of ribbons at first, we can find 
the number of blue ribbons simply by subtracting 40 from 83. And that gives us 43. And that is the answer to this question. I hope you find this tutorial helpful, especially in the way I organize the information and decide which value should be 100%. If you have any questions for me or have any suggestions as to what kind of topic you'd like to see me explain in upcoming videos, please leave a comment in the comment box below. Also subscribe to this channel for more free tutorials.